Big up Spurs fans near and far. But not only Spurs fans, big up football fans near and far. Another episode with your boy, Veggie Spurs. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, I, I thought I'd do something different today. I thought I'd do a reaction show. And Northside is the person who put it in my mind. And he will be joining us in just a moment. But hey. Let me just remind everybody, because I've been getting trolled, I've been getting a lot of grief in the chats. I warned one touch. Yesterday on Never a Foul, I said I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. What did I mean? I said, don't start shaking your bum. Don't shake your bum violently until you have played. You're coming at me about the Newcastle result. It was a smashing grab. It was dusty. I know. However, you haven't played Villa yet. And anyone who's been following me, I said, Unite Emery is going to go to the Emirates and he's going to do something. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't expecting what I saw today. I was expecting maybe a draw, maybe a scumbag stinking out the place, nil-nil. But to see what transpired, <laughs> 10 minutes to the end of time, end of the game, I can only but laugh. So big up everyone tonight. Northside will be joining me. And I'm also going to be having Josh, uh, a view from a stand, Villa fan in the building. Now also, let me just remind the artilleros of this world, all of these dusty Arsenal fans, who've been trolling me in the chat. I said it. I'm not going to lie. I've been telling you. You see, a lot of Arsenal fans want to grief me. But the truth is, if you hear me out and you read between the lines, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to foresee what I've seen last year. I get trolled on. I know what you did last summer. And I said, a couple of weeks ago, I said, for me, I've noticed that there's a negative correlation between Arsenal and Easter eggs. It's got something to do with Fabrice Cream eggs. I know that Arsenal and April, they don't mix. I know it. I've seen it. Arsenal got a win against Brighton. Everyone in the chat, what did you say, Dej? What did you say, Dej? What did you say? I said, cool. Then I was ready to give you the benefit of the doubt. I was saying, you know what? Arsenal drew at home to Bayern Munich. You could have lost the game. I didn't start changing my tune. I said I expect Arsenal to go through to the final. But this week, what a week. 2-2 Two -two draw with Bayern Munich. A dusty Bayern Munich who lost the Bundesliga to Leverkusen. And then today, getting slapped up in your yard. Artillero, explain this, my brother. Explain how you're getting slapped up in your own yard by Villa. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I, early in the week, I was cussing Ollie Watkins. I was saying that Ollie Watkins is not a top six player. I don't know what team in the top six, in the big six, would get him. But after that bloody finish towards the end of the game, I'll take him. I will have Ollie Watkins at Spurs. What a player. Bad man, bad man, bad man. Arsenal fans, we ain't bringing out the green bottles just yet. It's not a disaster. Let me help you. It is just one game. It's just one game. You can still do it. <laughs> you can still win the league. I mean, come on. You know what I mean? It's only a couple of points. But Arsenal fans, I'm not going to lie to you, though. I I'm sure you guys must be royally pissed. And when Northside comes in, he's going to explain. What are you doing? Arsenal fans in the chat, what are you doing? Big up to everyone in the building. All to everyone that is tuned in right now. Danger Artists, Urgent Singh, James, the CFC. CFC, Artillero, everyone in the building, Pinto, big up to you, Tyrell. Um, Ty Tyrell, you said that I lost this weekend. Bro, <laughs> let me tell you, Ty, why I can shake my bum, unlike you. 
Yes, we lost, but we haven't lost top four. Yeah, okay, we might currently be sitting fifth, but we all know Tottenham is going to take that Champions League spot. It's light work. Do you understand? Once we win in our next our next game or the game after that, we're fourth because we weren't going to win the trophy this season. We knew that it was a write off. As for you, though, Ty Gunner TV, this week could be a disaster week. Because if you go out against Bayern Munich on Wednesday, it's just the prem. And if you get slapped up by Tottenham on the 28th, then your season done. That means what I've been preaching from the beginning of the season, that there is no difference between Tottenham and Arsenal, will come to pass. Hold that. Hold that yourself. Now, for me, I'm not going to lie. I think it is a cruel, cruel way to flop the show. You can't put in all that work and then to let it go. That's like cooking up some fancy free course meal for your other half. You say, you know what? I really want to surprise you. I really want to look after you. You've got the starters. You've got the dinner. You've got the dessert. And you pull it on a tray. And then as you're walking to the living room to give it to your other half, you trip over your laces and you drop and the food goes on the floor. What is the point of all the hard work if you ain't going to eat it? If you ain't going to eat it, it is madness. And to be honest, I don't even want to run joke. I don't want to cook Arsenal too tough. It's sad. It's a very sad place to be, and I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't like it. Artillero, I've got too much love for you. He's saying, I despise I despise this with every fibre of my being. I despise you. Good, because I love you. I love you. Arsenal fans, to be loved. You've seen coming to America. Let me tell you, to be loved. Oh, what a feeling. To be loved. Absolutely Fantastic. Let's get into it, though. What happened? I think playing Zinchenko at the back, I had Arsenal fans telling me that Zinchenko is better than your doggy. Zinchenko is a bad man. Zinchenko is a Premier League champion. Remember that? Zinchenko has got the pedigree. Pedigree chum. That's what he's got. He's got pedigree chum. Dog food. You were telling me about his pedigree. You were telling me about the Premier League titles that he won and that he was going to bring that winning mentality to your club. He was going to bring that mentality to your club. This brother, this Zinni, Zinedine, B-Tech Zinedine Zidane has probably cost Arsenal the league. What was the point in buying him? And I said to Arsenal fans at the time, don't shake your bum for Zinchenko, because there's a reason why Pep sold him to you. <laughs> He's not a dummy. Pep, Pep is not a dummy. If he's selling you a player, that means that player is surplus to requirements. That's what it means, my guys. And Zinchenko has gone on to deliver the goods. He was absolutely rubbish. But we can't blame just Zinni. Because the truth is, every Arsenal fan knows Wagwan. Yes, CFC, you done know. We know what you did last summer. What is it with Arsenal? What is it with Arsenal and April? It is killing me, killing me softly. Now, I'm not welcome, Northside. I'm not here to cook. I'm here this evening to do a different thing. All I want to do is ask questions. I want to know about. Zinchenko, the person who was supposed to bring this Premier League winning mentality to your club, this person who was going to bring his Man City pedigree and bring it into Arsenal, yet I saw him flop today. I want to know what Arteta was thinking. I want to know whether I was right in making a negative correlation. Arsenal fans giving me bare grief in the chat when I was just giving you an observation Arsenal and April, that na make it. That don't mix. You and Easter eggs. But Easter, Easter started a week late. That's what it was. Easter started a week late. Easter started this week. The bottle has started this 
week. My bro, Northside, sorry for my long intro. Big up to you. Big up to everyone in the chat. Legitly, what happened today, my bro? What the hell happened? <clears throat> today is a demonstration of what I've been saying about this Filo da Puta, the flipping Spanish Joey from Friends Arteta. One dimensional. One dimensional, bro. One dimensional. That's what he is. Mm. Yeah, and today showed. Mm. When you have to change it up, he doesn't know how to change it up. You take off our best our best player of the game, Odegaard. Today he was actually playing well. And you know yeah. I criticise Odegaard. You know I don't rate him that highly as top gooners. Today he was actually creating. I've been getting on to Odegaard about when Hayes, when Havertz make runs, a lot of times he doesn't play him the through ball. He buffers, like AOL, internet back in the day. Buffering. Bare buffering. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Connection going bad because your mum's picking up the call back from, back from Luanda in Angola. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To start gossiping with your aunties about what's been going on in the village. That's what he was doing, bro. That's what he was doing, yeah? yeah. Odegaard was actually playing ball throughs to, to Havertz, yeah? You take him off. Ben White was our best defender. Everybody else was trash. Ben White was our best defender. You take him off. Explain that to me. Tactically, it doesn't make sense to take off your best players yeah, that are actually he? performing. I Makes no sense, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Saka, listen, Trossard gets taken off. Trossard, fin listen, our whole front three, the finishing was, was crap, yeah? But Saka wasn't doing anything, bro. Man had one chance, he headed it yeah, over the post. That went wide. And he had post. one shot that went wide, exactly. Yeah. Other than that, he wasn't doing nothing. He wasn't taking on the fullback. He wasn't, he wasn't sourcing, but he gets to play 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what looks to me like favouritism. Mm -hmm. Trossard, doesn't, Trossard doesn't play well. He was doing more than what Saka was doing. You know with them games, yeah, where a player, all they need is to be clinical, but they, they're actually creating shit. They're just not putting teams to the sword. That player still warrants to be on the pitch over the player that's doing jack shit. And Saka was doing jack shit. Yeah. Jesus was doing nothing. Cool, get him off. Why are you playing Havertz in the midfield? When we started off the season, for 18, 19 games, we were carrying Kai Havertz when he was playing as a midfield. Then you started to get a tune out of him. And that is a player you know I don't rate. You're getting a tune out of him when you switched him to play up front. Yeah. So why did you change it? Because it wasn't working, so what's the point? You're getting points and you're winning games with Kai Havertz playing up top. If you're not playing them up top, you know it doesn't work in the middle. Yeah. So what's the point? You've had 19 games worth of, of experience to see that this guy is ineffective in the midfield. I don't get it. Rice getting cooked. Why not bring on Partey? Tell Partey to sit and get Rice doing those late runs in the box, like we did against Luton, which led to De uh, Declan Rice beating, um, getting us the win over Luton, because he, he gets that last minute header, and then we win the game 4-3. Because him sitting in this game, he was getting outworked. So get him doing the Xhaka role. He was yeah. doing it early in the season, it was working. Why didn't you get Ben White running down the right-hand side and whipping in crosses? Because if you put Havertz where Jesus is, because it wasn't working with Jesus, and you've got Declan Rice doing the Xhaka role, you've got two players there that you can target when White is when Ben White is whipping in crosses. Two players that can head of the ball. Gives you a different dynamic. Yeah. But that's me asking too much, because this manager doesn't know what he's doing. When we went in that run, yeah, after we beat Liverpool and we went on that run, that mad run, we were just winning game after game after game. We're playing Kivio as left back. Today, you had Tommy Asu. Or Kivio that you could have played. Now, I don't rate Kivio, but in the league, he's been decent. <coughs> if you don't want to play him, play Tommy Asu. Yeah. Why, did, why were we getting open up against Bayern Munich? Because they were targeting Zinchenko on the left-hand side. We've seen, defensively, Arsenal has been the best defensive team this season without Zinchenko in the defence. Why are you doing that? You can't tell me about injury because Tommy Asu's on the bench. You can't tell me about injury Kivio's on the bench. So you can't tell me about injuries, bro. It's not an injury thing. Yeah. Yeah. So why are you doing that? Makes no sense, bro. Both our centre-backs, second game, dropping stinkers, Phil and Lil with their cocoa heads. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? The, Mar the Wayne brothers, bro, from White Chicks, once again returned to, uh, to play centre-back, bro. But you know what, Deji? We didn't go out there and address the fact that we need another centre-back that can compete with them two. Yeah. Last season, I told you, Kivio can't play there. We had yeah. Rob Holding. Get rid of Rob Holding. We never recruited a centre-back that can actually compete with them. So if they drop stinkers, guess what? We're just gonna play them all. We're gonna play them regardless. Great management, and this is why I don't rate this manager because I've been calling this out, bro. These men justified Reese Nelson to play as a right wing. Yeah, cool. Even when shit goes sideways, bro, 
Saka still plays. Why? Because they don't really rate Reese Nelson. They don't really rate him. Because the only time... If Reese Nelson doesn't break into the team when Saka's dropping stinkers, which he's dropped a lot of stinkers this season, when is he ever going to break into the team, my guy? They don't yeah. trust him. They don't but why not? Him. He's a good player, though. Why not? You tell me. He ain't good why enough. not? I don't get it. And you're right. So I thought Kivio might have been injured. That's why he didn't start. So you mean to you mean Arteta was just so basically you underestimated Villa today. He disrespected the team because really under no anyone can see that Zinch this Zinchenko don't want it. He don't want it from a Bailey. He don't want it from the pace that these men have. Why would you play Zinchenko when you've got Kivio or you've got um Tommy Yasu? I saw Tommy Yasu come on. I was thinking, why is he coming on? Why is he on the pitch? It would it just looked weird. Sorry, bro, to cut you, but I'm just kind of agreeing with what you're saying, to be honest. Go on. No, no, no. That's what I was going to... Bro, this guy, this manager is a fraud, yeah? Remember after Luton, I told you ESR was our best player. We rotated the whole team and we played ESR. I said, you know what, yeah? This guy's actually performed against Luton. He deserves more minutes. I said, yo, Odegaard, if Odegaard drops a stinker, he deserves some more minutes. If yeah. any of the front three drop the stinker, he can play in the wide positions as well. He deserves more minutes. Game after game gets no minutes, bro. Now when you're in the shit, in the 79th minute, you're bringing on ESR. When he's had no minutes since Luton, bro. What kind of man management is that, bro? How many times do we say, if a player's in form, play him or give him minutes, bro. But keep that momentum going. You dead off his momentum after Luton. And now when you're in the crap, now you want to bring on ESR. Make that shit make sense, bro. Three games have already passed since Luton, bro. And now you want to bring him on. Now you want him to save you. And then if the player dare not play well, then you're going to say, well, sorry, ESR, you're not playing the next game. He didn't play well against uh, Aston Villa. If I was him, I'd be like, bro, you took, you put me on when there's 10 minutes to go, bro. Am I dickhead? Am I dickhead? You ain't using me properly, bro. I've been playing well. Kai Havertz wasn't playing well in the midfield. Why didn't I play in the midfield, bro? He's not a midfielder. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Then, 87th minute, you're going on and bringing in Ketia. <laughs> Mel Delsh! This I saw I saw him and I'm not gonna lie, I did laugh because you know when you see a kitty catty, you know it's done. Because I don't believe any of well, he's putting this on him. Yeah. Right he's to like he's going into the he's gonna game. score. It's long. It's the weirdest thing to see a kitty catty come on when you're losing two nil or when you're losing one nil or whatever. And you know, you know, I know as a Spurs fan that this brother ain't scoring. There's nothing that this guy can do. I'm more likely to score a goal, and I ain't kicked ball in 10 years. You get me? And I've got ligament damage. I'm more likely to score. Unless <laughs> i got ligament damage. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, like that. I'm not even going to lie to you. I've got ligament damage. And I, I'm more likely to score. But go on, bro. Sorry. No. Bro, what else do you want me to say, bro? It's, it's a joke, bro. It's a joke. Like Zinchenko, bro, you you take it off Ben White, you're bringing on Zinchenko, you're bringing on Tommy Asu, bro. But Zinchenko stays. <laughs> my God, my God, bro, it's crazy. It is crazy. So, bro, I guess for me, obviously, I guess one of the things we when we talk about bottle, and I know a lot of Arsenal fans get really upset when we talk about the bottle job. They used the whole excuse last season of Saliba. And I even jumped on the hype of the Saliba thing, saying, you know what, maybe if Saliba was there, maybe Arsenal win the league. We can't say that this time, man. Saliba's been about, pretty much played every Premier League game. Gabriel Morales has played every Premier League game. So I want to ask this question legitly. You, man, what were you thinking today when you saw Crystal Palace beat Liverpool? What was going through your mind? Me, I was like, yo, let's let's see, yeah. Let's see if 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 Arsenal have actually changed. And you know, like when we've spoken about have Arsenal changed, I've always been hesitant. Always been hesitant when I've spoken to you. You know why? Because I said Arsenal will change if they change that last seven percent of last season. What do I mean by that? People talk about 93% top of the league. I'm like, yeah, you see that seven percent? That's what's needed to get over the line. And that is when it's crunch time. And until I see that. I'm not going to say this team has changed. Yeah. And I have not seen that, bro. Yeah. I've yeah. not seen that. This is, this is, we are now in that 7% where we bought it last season. So mm -hmm. when people are telling me all season, have you changed your mind? I'm like, bro, we're not, we're not there yet. 
<laughs> we're not there yet, bro. We're telling me about things have changed. You know what I'm saying? This is not the time where we normally capitulate. This is now the time that we normally capitulate. And what happened? We've capitulated. Well, you know, the, the thing is, you know, and I, 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 for me personally, and I'm not, but on, under any stretch, Arsenal fans, I am not enjoying this situation uh, right now. Not. But, you know, I, I was saying to you all about the what we, you know, we knew what you did last summer, the correlation between Arsenal and April, and the way Arsenal fans were shaking their bum. The bum shaking because Tottenham lost to Newcastle. Yeah, Tottenham's performance against Newcastle was dusty. But these men were shaking their bum like they won the league. And I said, chill, hold on. Let the month of April pass first. And then we know Wag won. We will know if Arsenal, like you said, is the real deal. Now, for me, everything was put on a platter. Your, your nearest and dearest got slapped up by Newcastle. You've seen Liverpool drop points last week. You saw them drop points in the week. And then they drop points today. You must be licking your lips. Licking your lips to slap these lot up. And then, do you know what? That little chance that they let Martinez... The, 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 what made me laugh is that Martinez, this brother was at your club for 10 years. He couldn't get a sniff. Martinez is making weldies in front of goal. Your strikers are kicking the ball at him. It was harder to hit him than it was to score. I can't believe the madness and the killer of killers is every Arsenal fan said 3-1 Arsenal because Douglas Louise is not playing today. I didn't say that. No, Did you Douglas... see my prediction yesterday? My prediction was a draw. Your, see, mine was a draw. Mine was 1-0. And Yours it was, was worse than my prediction. Did you get me? I yeah. never, I didn't see it coming, but look. I brought Josh in. He's the Villa fan. Obviously, he's wearing his shirt. Just want to quickly hear you from your perspective. What happened there, Josh? Was that a Unite Emery masterclass? Did Unite give his own club a taste of their own medicine? Because basically, that's what it looks like. Let us know real quick. Well, first and foremost, good evening, everyone. Uh, listen, Unai, he owns London. And, and people need to remember that. As an Aston Villa manager, he's now won seven, drawn three when come to London away. And I looked at Nicola Arteta's team selection today and I thought, do you know what? All right, you've gone attacking Mikel, but why why are you changing it? Why are you what, what what's what's your midfield saying? Why are you why are you fiddling with that midfield? Because that's where Arsenal should have exploited us today. We we we've got a Yuri Tillemans who is known for not having the legs and John McGinn who hasn't really played in the middle of the park much this season, done more of a job out wide. And first half, we rode a bit of a wave. We rode a bit of a wave, an attacking wave. But it was a wave. It was one of those waves, Deji, where I just kept looking, going, where's the clinical finisher in this side? Who's going to actually put the ball in way? And when I saw Gabriel Jesus, you know, starting, I was like, yeah, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. And, you know, we rode that <laughs> wave. Then, then the counter-attack and Watkins comes on. So, Smashes the post, and I'm, I'm and we gain confidence from that move. That move there, and the Emmy Martinez save happened at a perfect time. That moment there of we've gone one and nearly scored. Yes, we've got a world class keeper in. Uh, and then second half for me, it was it was just domination from Villa. We we genuinely made Arsenal crap themselves. They retreated. They gave us too much respect. They let our midfield play. All of a sudden, Yuri Tillemans was picking passes left, right, and centre. John McGinn was slowing the game down. And then when you've got the, the the dynamic pace and direction of Zaniolo, Bailey, Watkins, it was always going to happen. And you know what? I'm 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 just so happy that Unai, because I'm sick of these Arsenal fans, some of them, not all of them, who keep telling me, "Ah, oh, your manager, he bottles it in the league all the time. Your manager doesn't know how to do cup and league. Your manager this, your manager that." And I'm saying. Let him do his thing this season. Then tell me. 
Or is it that he was just at a club in Arsenal where it all went wrong and maybe it wasn't all under his direction and fault because of that? So I'm so proud of him. I'm so happy for him. It's another massive twist and turn, for both both ends of the t- title and the top four. And I thought a few players for Arsenal ghosted today. Yeah, I don't remember seeing Declan Rice. I don't. Remember I don't remember. Him. Yep, go on. I don't remember seeing him apart from that shot at the end, which he converted. You know, out of desperation. I don't remember seeing him. I thought Ezri Konsa done a job on Trossard, done a job on Martinelli, bullied them. Um and and yeah, I just I just I just thought as well Kai Havertz can't remember seeing him today at all. Um so Villa did a number, I'm happy, Deji, and yeah. And good, right, good. And rightly so. And before I bring in Onime, he's just a neutral Man City fan's perspective. I have to say I totally agree. I was saying to Arsenal fans, imagine Josh, Arsenal fans, not not North Side, because North Side agree. Imagine me being shut down simply because I'm a Spurs fan. When I said to Arsenal fans, I can't see you guys winning the league because you ain't got a striker. And you know what Arsenal fans turned around and told me? They said, Dej, Man City won the league without a striker. Martinelli and Saka will score more than 15 Premier League goals this season. And I went, really? I said, you know what? I said, one, you're not City. Two, remember that Mane and Salah were both getting in the 20 pluses. I can't see Martinelli and Saka getting 20 plus goals, but you're right. The way that you not, you know what? People have asked me this question, and I'm going to say it live and direct. Unai Emery is a world class manager. He just wasn't given the time or the tools at Arsenal. He's better than Posta Coglu. I'm going to I'm going to call it for what it is because this brother knows <laughs> how to adapt. He knows how to change it up. That little shift in play, hit them hard, hit them low. Konsa, I have to say, big up to him. You're the one who told me, and another one of my friends said, when Konsa plays for Villa, they tend to win. Hardly lose with that brother in the team. Big up to him. He deserves an England call-up. But the way you peppered them, I'm not going to lie, it was almost, Josh, and would you say I'm harsh in saying this, it was almost Newcastle-ish. Yesterday, I talked about the smashing grab of Newcastle yesterday. It felt a little bit smashing grab. And I mean that in the, you know, it, I'm not, it's not being disrespectful, but I was asking Arsenal fans yesterday if they're going to deploy those tactics against Spurs. And sometimes it's about being pragmatic. When it comes to the later, the last seven games of the season, we don't want to see ticky-tacky. We just want to see the right football. Get the ball in the back of the net. And that's what Villa did today. Under pressure. You guys were under pressure, bro. The the stadium was full of Aston Villa fans. Pressure for you. Pressure for Arsenal. And you, man, turned up. You and I got the tactics right. I I want to just big him up. Big him up. Because a lot of people will will put a downer on him. Um, Mm -hmm. On the mirror, just quickly, from an outside view looking in, before I bring back my bro, north side. Your thoughts as a City fan, because you must be licking your lips. You did the job against Luton yesterday. You saw Liverpool crash and burn. You were not expecting this, let's be honest. Nah, I wasn't expecting both of them to crash and burn this weekend. I wasn't expecting to just remain top, to be honest. We had to do our job, do what we did yesterday. Um, did it well. Um, I don't know whether that you know added pressure to, to, to the situation today, but I expected Liverpool to beat Crystal Palace. But with Arsenal, I mean... It, it's 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 no surprise, you know. What I mean, um, when when managers when managers play and managers that are able to change things and 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 do certain things during the game and make certain changes, like when when I watch City play, we can see all the changes that that, that Pep does and Pep needs to do. You know what I mean against Real Madrid, we change we change a couple of things in the second half to 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 get two more goals. So when when Arteta's playing and you got Zinchenko playing left back or wherever he's playing this inverted nonsense like still using the old formation that we used a long time ago that we don't even really use anymore you know um and he's still using that it's it's yeah it's it's a joy for me i'm i'm i'm, I'm excited today to be honest i'm just i'm just ecstatic i didn't expect to be top and to be honest 
yeah, they, they're going to make it so easy now because now that we're top, when we win our, if we win our next two games, I can't see them winning their next two games. Our fixtures are, are easier than theirs. It's, it, for me, I said, I was on a, I was on a, I was on the podcast, I was on a, um, um, watch along chat yesterday and I said to Steve and I said, I said, Spurs losing yesterday, right, has given Villa an extra motivation for today. Yeah. Because, yeah. because now they know that if we, if we slip up again, Spurs are going to now win that game in hand. So now it's like, well, we're on top of them. They win the game and it doesn't matter. And they've gone and done the job. I was expecting at least trying to get a draw or something, but they've gone yeah. and won 2 0. Well, there's a couple of things that I agree. On. There's a couple of things. The first thing that I think is quite astonishing is that basically Liverpool and Arsenal have given Man City the league. It's for yeah. Man City. Both of them lost. Thanks for coming. We've got, we got it from here now. Thanks. Away from home, you could kind of understand it. You've gone to Villa Park. Villa Park is a bit of a fortress. You've gone to Palace. Palace, Sellers Park, it can be a bit dodgy. But you're at home. The, the, the feats were at home. They've literally handed the baton. Um, so for me, it, it just senses something around the mentality. You can see that Liverpool are caving. And this week, I, I think this is the beginning of the disaster for Arsenal. Let, let, me just add, you... let me just add one little thing here. Yeah. Let me just add one little thing. When they start to want to compare Rice to Rodri, I want to say Rice. And... When Rodri plays, have you seen Rodri play? Have you seen, have you seen, try and go play with your, 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 your seven-year-old son and his friends in the park. That's what Rodri looks like on the pitch sometimes. He's a daddy on that pitch. Rice doesn't come close. Man's like 68 or 69 games unbeaten. So when they want to do this comparison nonsense, please just, yeah, allow me. Yeah, but you know what it is? Big up to Northside in the building. He's the only Arsenal fan. Someone said it in the chat. He's the only legit Arsenal fan because he hasn't be, wasn't shaking his bum violently like some of these cronies. So I'm going to come back to you, Northside, real quick. Um, and then we, I want to talk about your next couple of fi fixtures as well. You've heard from Josh in relation to how you've played. You've heard a little bit from Onime and you've heard from me in the sense that, for me, it feels like now you've given the title to, to Man City. Can I get your honest perspective? Is this the start of the bottle? Because for me now, I'm slightly worried now. I'm worried for your club because I feel like you've done all this work. You've cooked the meal for your missus. You've cooked it. It's starters. You know, you've got the main course, the dessert. You've even put a little champagne on there. You pull it on the tray, you got little rolls in there, you know what I mean? You had the little fluffy, fluffy slippers on, and you were like, you know what? And the rope, and the rope, and the rope. I love this. And yeah, and as soon as you stepped out of the kitchen, you just tripped over yourself and all the food fell on your face, face kind of like that. Do you know what I mean? Bro, is, is this the start of the bottle? Because you know your team better than I do. I've been calling it because I see what I see, but you know them more in depth. You watch your team week in, week out. Are they wobbling right now? It's not wobbling. They've fallen over. It's done. It's not a start of the bottle. It's done. The bottle's broken. That's it. That's it. Like that. It's you don't think you guys can come back from this? You don't think... When we drew to City, yeah, told you, when we drew to City, yeah, you, you, I'm sure you saw my match reaction. I wasn't happy. And I said, we've now left ourselves in a situation where we can't drop any more points. And I remember telling you, too many draws is as good as a loss. A loss, mm -hmm. we're done. We lost. It's done. That's it. I told you, when we had 10 games to go, Arsenal fans were being very naive and talking out of their ass instead of talking out of their mouth. Talking rubbish about, oh, look at the run-ins. Nah, easy games, easy games. I told you, Aston Villa would be a banana skin. I told you this. We spoke. Yes. I even said this. Villa. We talked about it together. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. I said Aston Villa. I said Chelsea. I said mm -hmm. Spurs. And I said mm -hmm. Man United. Mm -hmm. You know what they told me? Villa? Nah, they're rubbish. I was like, Really? Nah, they're rubbish. Tell me now something, foolish that puta. What did I tell you, so marikash that merda? Did I not tell you? But I'm the negative one. Villa, nah, we can do Villa. They're rubbish. Oh, we don't rate them. Cool. Do the leave. Do the leave. London derby. You already know how it is. London derbies are always hard. Even if you face West Ham, North London derby, Chelsea, London derby, doesn't matter. No, London derbies are always hard. We always want to get that one over each other. Nah, Tottenham, who are Tottenham? They're rubbish, they're bottling it. Rare, 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 rare. Man United. Oh, no, nah, Man United are rubbish. I'm like, yo, do you remember last season? The first time we went to Man United, yeah, we lost. Yeah, but you know, look at the team now. And all right, cool, 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 cool. So, what are they telling me now? 
The level of arrogance is crazy, bro. Start of the season, what did I say to you? I'm not happy. We didn't get striker. Yeah. We didn't get a right winger to rotate with Saka, who had a trash performance. That first half was basically everything I've said. We can create all these chances. We don't have a gun, man. A man tried to justify to me Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz! I told you that Philo Daput is a bum, bro. I told you that guy is a bum. You know what I'm saying? But these men want to justify it because I don't want to get bantered on Twitter. I don't want to get bantered on WhatsApp. Oh, just back the team. Shut up, you idiot. Yeah? I've been saying it as I see it. I told man we need another centre-back. Our centre-back pairing have been having two games now in a row, stinkers. Yeah. Can't rotate them, bro. Can't rotate them. You know why? Because we have no one else to play in that position that's anywhere near their level. I told man we need... Actually, I don't even think Odegaard was that bad today. I actually think he was one of the better players. Wouldn't, wouldn't give him 10 out of 10. I think I'd give him a six and a half. He was all right. He was effective in the first half. Second half, he died off. He was the only one that was really creating anything. He was the only one that was really creating anything, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? But I always said we need another number 10. I told him we need a deep line playmaker. I told him we need another left back. All them finish that puta that were like, oh, we got Zinchenko now. He's pivotal to the way that we play. When we went on that massive run, it wasn't with Zinchenko in defense, bro. So it's done. It's done. But you know what? These men, this new generation of men, I, I can't even call them men. They want to live in that. What was that? What's that world that they created? That metaverse. These the men metaverse, these yeah, metaverse, are, yeah. are created for the metaverse, bro. They're not created for real life. They can't hack it in real life, bro. Everything is sensitive. Oh, you're being negative. You're being that. Bro, take yourself back to the metaverse. You feel that puta. Call it as it is for the betterment of your club. We didn't do the business that we needed to. This manager's one dimensional. And we saw this from time ago, bro. We saw this from time ago. At the start of the season, we started playing this controlled football. And I said, bro, this ain't going to work. <laughs> oh, no, we're playing controlled football. We're playing controlled football. Bro, oh, come January, they're all screaming, sell the whole bench. Let's go get a striker. And we need to get away from this controlled football. But they were twerking for it for half the season. And I told them it ain't good enough. We ain't got players that play controlled football. Tricky, yeah? But no, we didn't buy a striker. Doesn't matter. Super Mikata knows exactly what we need. Get behind him. Get behind him, yeah? You better get behind him now because I saw a lot of Arsenal fans leaving the stadium. They call me toxic and negative because I call it as it is. Is it not toxic and neg negative while the game's going? You're walking out. Yes. All the players are turning watching. Your, turning your backs on your players live and direct is a disgrace. This is our last season. This is our last season at Brighton as well. The stadium emptied out. Is that not negative? Know. All your players can see that. The players on the bench can see that. Your coach can see that. All the, Everybody else that's connected with Arsenal can see you guys turning your back while the game is on. But they call us negative. That's definitely something that the players are going to watch. The players probably ain't going to watch our channels. Do you know what I'm saying? They're going to watch that. But well, these are the same people that, tell, right. that, 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 that will tell me that I have to get behind the process. Why don't you get behind the process when, when shit goes sideways? Yeah. I remember two seasons ago or three seasons ago when we lost to Everton. Yeah. They smacked us. And everybody said, this, this, is, this, is the, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. And they all walked out. These men have a history of it. When the going mm -hmm. squad get behind the team, get behind the team. And then when shit implodes, oh, no, I've had enough. This is a disgrace. Really? So why do you attack people like me that call it as it is? Exactly. That's real what, 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 Tell me what's negative. That, that tell me what's real. negative. What's, 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 the, what's the difference? What's the difference between them walking out and people calling that's, out? That's, that's real talk. See now, yeah? Now that we're not going to win a major honour, then it will be, yeah, maybe we should have got a striker. Maybe we needed another winger because Saka always gets burnt out at the end of the season. Maybe we needed to go out there and reinforce the midfield because barring our starting eleven, the bench, Fabio Vieira, ESR ain't good enough. Maybe we needed another left back. Maybe we need another centre back. But when I'm calling that from the start of the season, we're, we're the ones that are negative. We're the ones that are not real Arsenal fans. But when the season's done, that's when we can say exactly what you called me negative. Now you want to say what I'm saying. Nah, bro, bun this, bro. They deserve everything that's coming to them. Bro. Yeah, they and you know what? I, everything you're saying, and I'm going to bring you in just now, is like, I feel like I'm being vindicated because a lot of people call me deluded dej, but it's it's more like I can see things. You know, I think uh, Northside called me mystic dej yesterday. And one of the things that I foresaw was that I said I could see Arsenal losing three games in their last seven. I said it. No side, you know, you don't know. I said I weren't sure which teams. But You've been calling three, Easter to be fair. Three. You've been calling Easter a lot. Yeah, I've been calling it for a while and I've been saying it about Easter. Now, I'm going to ask you, Josh, based on what you saw your team do, Arsenal have Spurs and Wolves next. 
Yes, Spurs and Wolves. And then I'll bring you in quickly on the mayor as well. What are your thoughts? Can you see Arsenal losing more games? Or do you think maybe Aston Villa was just too good? Maybe you had a good game. Because, you know, a lot of people were talking about how dusty Arsenal was today. Let's give some credit to Villa. Villa played well. The game plan worked. Do you get what I'm saying? They were underestimated. They knew they were going to be underestimated. Only Watkins knew World one. Only Watkins at the end of the game went, look here, mate. I knew we were going to come here and do something. I knew we were going to come and win tonight. So, on that basis, Josh, let us know. Was it was it a, was it like a was it a fluke for Villa? Were you expecting this? And what do you foresee from an outsider looking in on the Gooners moving forward? Sort of touch on what Northside said and yourself, Deji. When you talk about a manager who can adapt his tactics and tweak. We went to the Etihad, and what we did today at the Emirates, we should have done at the Etihad. We went a little bit too ballsy at the Etihad. We went a little bit too attacking against Man City. We opened oh, ourselves up. What's going on? We, we opened ourselves up a little bit too much at the Etihad. And I thought it was it, – but I saw something there. And, again, I got called out from this on on a, a, by a few people, never a foul, who laughed at me and said – what you're praising your team to go to Etihad, and you got smacked up four one, but I was like, but I saw a lot of positives, and I said, that's what Arsenal should have done against Man City when they drew with them, and I said Villa Unai Emery went on the front foot, and he went at Man City, and we had a really poor turning point where we conceded that stupid Phil Foden free kick goal because our wall pussied out turned their backs, but we were in that game, oh, yeah. right, and 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 we were in that game, and I thought if Villa can do that. We can do that against Arsenal. We can do that against Liverpool because we still have to play them. But we just need to be a bit more astute and defensively solid. And then when you ask the question about Arsenal, well, for me, last year should have been the biggest learning curve of their history. And and again, not just a game by game, but clearly as Northside saying, where did Arsenal fall short last season? Well, clearly he said about addressing the striker, addressing certain positions. Yeah. Arsenal aren't learning. They're not learning. They're not evolving. They're not recognising. And it doesn't matter. I've said this for weeks now. It doesn't matter how good your first six or seven months are of the season. It's how you end the season. Mm. It's the mentality to end the season. Man City can be crap for five or six months. But do you know what? We always know City ends strong. We always know City are like a, ra a raging ball. They come through the line. What am I learning about this Arsenal team? This Arsenal team, they it's like a PR wheel, isn't it? They get people to believe that someone's going to finally challenge Man City. They get people to believe that there's this process of evolution and change. And then they just do things like today. And they go, so you haven't learned. Where are the leaders? Kai Havertz isn't the leader that comes and changes that dressing room. There isn't the leadership in that team to sort of just calm your head. I saw John McGinn today, captain of Aston Villa, slow the game down when he needed to in the middle of the park. Just use that experience. And you get people like Jorginho coming on. You get people like Jorginho coming on. Like crazy sub, whatever Arteta was doing there. What, what's he going to go and change the game? You what? You know, you're chasing the game. You've got the, the sideways, backwards, stat pad merchant doing everything he can to try and, you know. Um, so do I see them? Listen, I, I obviously want Spurs to slip up, Deji, right? Yeah. But I can see you beating Arsenal. I can see you beating Arsenal, 100%. I don't like saying that. But I'm going to speak like, you know, truth like you do. I think Spurs will slap up Arsenal. I really, I really do. I um, agree with you, Villa fan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I agree. Because you know what, Josh? As you were calling that certain man, and I was looking at Northside's face, Northside was thinking what I was thinking. Kai Havertz doesn't get in the Spurs team. Jorginho don't get in the Spurs team. I think... Uh, who else was playing? Zinchenko doesn't. Zinchenko, Zinchenko doesn't. bloody don't get in the Tottenham team. Rea don't get in the Spurs team. I think bloody hell, Saka with his current form. I can't. I can't tell you who is dustier, Saka or Kudelski, because these two brothers are fully dusty, dusty in and Tuton Cummings coffin. When you're naming these type of players, if this is what Arsenal have to give us. They're going to get slapped up. And I have people 
<laughs> laughing at me. That, the maddest thing is that people are quick to type. They're in their underwear, bashing the way at the keyboard. Do you know what I mean? Quick typing, mm. typing, typing. <laughs> the truth is, this Arsenal team is dusted in Tutankhamun's Carmen's coffin, and only one person knew that. Northside. Northside knew. Northside, I'm bigging you up. You knew that this team was dusty, but you harboured a little bit of hope. Prove me wrong. I would rather be in that camp. I think you're dusty, but prove me wrong. Rather than, like some of the Arsenal fans were doing today, just before kickoff, walking down Highbury High Street with red thongs on, shaking their bum violently with a pint. Come on! It's the most horrible sight I've ever seen. Shaking your <laughs> bum down Highbury High Street with a pint of lager. Oh my, my God. On the mess, real quick from you, City fan. Is that it? Because Northside thinks it's it. Josh thinks it's it. You don't know what I think. Is this it? Is it over? Um, when you go to the train station, you got that. You got that yellow line between the train, between the platform and the and the and the train. When he says "mind the gap, please," and that's literally what it is right now. We got it from here. Thanks. You you run your race. We got it from here. Thanks. Six games left. Yeah, we we we're gonna do it. When I saw Arsenal come to City and come and play the low block and come and play their wingers as right backs and six defenders and 10 defenders and not crossing the halfway line. I thought to myself, this is such a small mentality shit to come and do at the Etihad. I know you want to, you want to get a result. I know you want to get a point. I know you don't want to lose the game. I know you thought last year we opened up and they beat us. Liverpool will never come and play, play like that against us. Liverpool never play, play your game. Like come and play your game. You're a big team. You're, you're, you're top of the league. You're above us. Come and beat City. I told you before. Come and beat us at the Etihad. Take that. Take that. We beat City at the Etihad. We were the first team to beat City in over a year and four months and counting. Because we haven't lost in a year and four months. Right? At the Etihad. We were the ones to come and do it. We mean business. We won this title. Come and do that shit. And we'll respect you. Don't come and play low block and we're getting... Arsenal's getting, what, 28% possession at the Etihad. That's ridiculous. That's, that's very poor. That is a small mentality that they brought to... To the Etihad, and they got a draw, and they think, "Oh, you got a draw." No, you got other teams that you you got to play against. Teams that are fighting for their lives. Tottenham are not going to be just sitting around. Tottenham won top four. They're going to attack Arsenal and just attack, attack, attack. So it's going to be hell for them. But from here now, we got it from here, thanks. Like this is the perfect sandwich game in between Real Madrid for us as well. Go to go to go to the Bernabeu and, and get free free draw. Come and slap up Luton. Take a few players off. Rest Phil Ford and the, and the rest of the man there. Wednesday, qualify for the Champions League semi-finals. FA Cup is starting to be one of them, one of them competitions where it's like it's a given now and an easy competition for us to win. So when I told when I told you before, I said, I said, we're winning two trophies. I don't know which two, but we're winning two trophies this season. So I don't know what everybody else is doing, but we're winning two trophies. So you tell me which two we're winning. But it looks like the FA Cup are gonna wrap that up as well. So the treble is on for us. The treble is still on for us. If it's Man City it's, it's actually unbeatable. mad. If you don't do the treble again, I think I'm done. I mean, it's, I've got a little who's if, we the, if we do the treble again, if we do the treble again, then we need to just shut up shop, close up the Etihad and say we completed football. It's done. Yeah. Like it's, close it the club. Let's start, let's start all over again. Let everyone go. You know when you know when you go to football manager and you get to the end kind of yeah. thing, and you're okay, yeah, yeah. And they don't let you go to any more, any more years anymore. So you have to restart again and sign players again. Then it gets excited again. We should just do that with City because this is just ridiculous. It would be a mockery. Let me just bring in my bro real quick. We're going to be wrapping up. Big up to everyone in the chat. All you people, make sure you smash the like. On the man in the building. Josh in the building as well, doing a reaction to the game, shaking his bum for the claret and blue. Northside. Hi, Josh, thank you very much. I owe you a drink, by the way. Thank you for giving us the title. No, thank you. Look at this guy's cheeky little bum here. Uh, Northside, real quick, what does this mean now moving forward? What do you want to see? Because you you are the voice of reason, and genuinely, we think like to like. First and foremost, I will ask this question, even though I already know your thoughts. Do you not harbour a little bit of hope for your club? It's not over yet. You're no, like no, 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 behind sorry. City. No, but sorry. moving forward... What needs to be the minimum standard? Because if you're if you're right and you don't win the champs and you don't win the prem, what was all this bluster for? And does Arteta? I, I don't think Arteta loses his job because you know my opinion is 
football is, you know, the fact that he's got you in the in the conversation. You guys were challenging again, and remember last year it was pretty much the last seven games where Arsenal bottled it. <laughs> I'm just saying. When I was making reference to that movie, I know what you did last summer. All you shaking your bum in your yard, you didn't use your brain. Wait for the last seven games. But, bro, what needs to happen to save Arsenal? I don't know if it's to save Arsenal's season, but I don't know. What do you see happening? What needs to happen moving forward? Moving forward, we need to suck Arteta. Yeah. Who? I, Who? I don't think Arteta. That's, I think that's harsh, no side. That's harsh. Harsh? Yeah, that's harsh, bro. Right? This is sport. This is sport. Say, true, true, say, true say people win championships and they still sack them, though, still. Yeah, exactly, bro. You know what I'm saying? True say people win trophies and they sack them. Yeah, quite no, We've better managers been sacked, bro. We've seen Mourinho mm -hmm. being sacked. He's a better manager. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We've seen mm -hmm. Ancelotti be sacked. He's a better manager. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He's not he's started. He has. It started this week. He's started this week. So go on, bro. So Arteta needs to come out. That's not going to happen, though. That's not realistic. No, even, even me. You asked me what I, I want. You didn't ask me what I, what you think I think the club's going to do. I want the manager. Okay, so <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want to know what you want. this team sacked, I want the majority of this team sold. I want this manager sacked. And I want somebody that's a proven winner. So that's what I want. That's what I want. You're telling me to save the season. We're not. There's no season to save. We are not. This is not a team that's built to win a Champions League, which is why when we had a conversation, I told you our best chance is winning the Premier League. We're more. The team is more built to win that than the Champions League. We wouldn't. You know, uh, the Aston Villa fan. Sorry, I can't see your name. Um, Josh. Josh. When Josh was talking about, you know, his manager's a tactician. That's why he was able to to win Europa Leagues with teams like Sevilla and Villarreal. Mm -hmm. Mm. Because there's times when you have to rely on your manager, and I, I kept mm -hmm. saying that about this manager. When there's games where you need your your players to perform, the, the system's already there. You're the better team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's other games where it's a tactical game, and this manager doesn't have the tactics to get us over the line. I've spoken about Porto today. They, even when we lost against Villa one 0 we should be beating Villa with all due respect. The money that we spend, we should be beating Villa, but we didn't. There's games where you need to rely on your manager and this manager is not shown to be a tactician. He's not shown to be a manager that is that can change things up. All he knows to do is what he's seen Pep doing. Playing a false nine. Playing with an inverted winger. Play, trying to put centre-backs in, in full-back positions. But every time he has to rely on himself, like the controlled system at the end, start of the season, this guy, his tactics are dead, bro. They're dead. Even when you look at formations, we always play the 4-3-3. When you look at substitutions, it's always like for like. When you look at the players that we get in, they're like for like. There's nobody that can change the game. There's no creativity with this manager. It's just like for like, bro. Everything is same old, same old, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? So this manager, this is his limitations, bro. This is his limitations. If you do him tactically, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to set us up in a better way. He doesn't know how to change up, play a 4-4-2 play a four, a four, four, or play a different system or... Change up what you want the players to do. He doesn't know how to do that, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, his arrogance is the reason why he will be he will be sacked eventually. Persisting with Zinchenko at left back, getting Enketia a new contract, getting El Nene a new contract, giving Reese Nelson a new contract. El Nene got a new contract. Huh? El Nene got a new contract. El Nene got a new contract. I think it was like Jesus. Wow. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Persisting with Fabi Vieira instead of going out there and getting a Madison. Not going and getting a proper striker. Getting a Kai Havertz to be the last... A player that's never been consistent in the Premier League. A player that's never scored goals consistently. Never been that player in the Premier League. But you go and get him as the last piece to get us over the line. Last season, we got second. You're supposed to get a player that's going to get you over the line. You finish second, you expect to buy players that are going to get you over the line. Yeah. Declan Rice, you can say that Declan Rice overall has improved Arsenal. Overall. Today he wasn't amazing, but overall when you look at his body of work, yeah. he improved yeah. us. Yeah, fair enough. You can't say that about Kai Havertz. People are talking about recency bias. He scored, what, eight, nine goals? But 20 of those appearances, he didn't do anything. So how is that? How is given... If, if people are going to justify to me that Arteta should keep his job, just on the Kai Havertz thing alone, he should be sacked. When we got rid of Lacazette, it's because he didn't score enough goals. When we got rid of Giroud, who scored two seasons, 16 goals a season, which is higher than Jesus, that's only had 14 goals in a season, even at Man City, you can't justify to me Kai Havertz. He's had nine goals, bro. So that, that told me 
we don't rate strikers unless they're hitting 20 goals season like Aubameyang. Since Aubameyang, all our strikers have been dusty. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, bro, this manager needs to be sacked. A lot of these players on the bench, he doesn't trust them. He doesn't trust them, bro. This is why it's taken 87 minutes to bring on Nketiah. You don't believe in him. This is why it's taken to the 80th minute to bring ESR. You don't believe in him. You don't believe in these players, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? So, nah, you created this system. You created this team. Sorry, it's time to go, bro. It's time to go. And everybody that told me about Jorginho and his Champions League experience, he's wow. the reason for that second goal. He hits it at a player and an Aston Villa counter. And what a disgrace that when they're hitting us on the counter, Oli Watkins, what a goal. What a goal. Big up to you, bro. What a goal. Give props to her props to G, bro. Aston Villa cooked us today. Yeah? Why is ESR the last man defending? <laughs> Explain that one to me. Yeah, Sucking, bro. I'm, I, I'm done with it, bro. I'm done with it. And, and listen, it was coming. Zinchenko kept trying to run through the defence, yeah? Run out the box and trying to dribble in deep. And, and Villa kept getting that ball. That's why Tielemann smacked the crossbar. Zinchenko losing the ball outside the box. Yeah. I'm done, bro. Listen, there's no more defending this guy. This Filo da Puta has got the time. He's got the money. Eu já tô por aqui. Sai da minha club. Eu tô cansado dessa porcaria. I don't care about no one justifying anything else to me. I'm done, bro. I am done. I'm done. Thank you, Arsenal. Another season of embarrassing me. I can be winning in life, but I always have to be clowned because of this football club. This is why I got my Portugal shirt on. Yeah? This is why I got my Portugal shirt on. Yeah? Because I, I didn't wear my Arsenal shirt today. Because I already knew. I knew these my, these panleiros were going to do something stupid. So I said, now, nah, my new Portugal shirt is looking kind of wavy. I'm wearing that, bro. I ain't wearing an Arsenal shirt. I ain't wearing it. You know what I'm saying? Suck this manager. That's, I'm that's, okay, bro. This is a I'm fan that I love. Northside, a man that speaks with chest about his club. Someone who loves his club. They are mainly... Like, Reggie, where's all the people that call us toxic and negative? I don't see them in the comments today. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're not. They've all run. They were, they were here, but they've all gone. You know why? Because they're in their underwear and they realise. They realise that they've been caught with their pants down. That's what they realize. Now, now, they their... got, now they got work tomorrow. Now they're busy. Now they now, oh, now they're ironing the, their kids' school uniform. Oh, oh, how convenient. How convenient, guys. That, oh, busy. Do you remember busy. that? You... Now no, they're, busy. Busy, bro. they're filling out their busy. job seekers allowance sheet. Now they're filling you know it out. Then, uh, you know busy. what? I'm supposed to look Football for a job. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, sir, no, sir said something just now, yeah. yeah. He said, sometimes the team needs the manager. As good as Man City are, right? Even Rodri said, Rodri said, we need our manager. We need a, we need his leadership, especially for games like this. We need his brain. We need his guidance. And these are players that have played seven, eight, nine years together. And they know when Kevin De Bruyne blinks, they know what he wants to do. But they still need Pep's guidance because Pep still changes things about. He still surprises them with little, little formations, little things that he notices that, that the other team would do or how the other team plays. Because the, all the players do, the players don't go home and start watching videos of what the other teams do. That's the manager's job, to watch these videos, notice how they play, get all this information and come to the training pitch and say, listen, they're going to do this, do this, this and this. If you watch our goal against um, set piece goal, obviously against Liverpool, right? That De Bruyne won to, to to Stones. That's little details that get you just the one up, just little tiny details like that, little things that you need to just tweak and just change, right? And 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 Ateta hasn't got it. Ateta did not graduate from Pep School before he was given this job, and that's his biggest problem. Yeah. Now, big up, bro. I I, I got a go, but Dej, love for having me on. Big up to the panel and. Um, yeah, man. It is what it is, man. I'll Nossa, big up to you. Realist Arsenal fan in the building. All for you Arsenal cronies shaking your bum. Go back and reflect. Go look <laughs> in the mirror, Bukaria. That's right. Look in the mirror. Because when we were trying to help you, you were calling us toxic. I can see all the comments on Northside's channel. Hi, you deluded dead. I told you three defeats. And that's why I came with my prediction. Because I didn't trust you guys. That's why even Dusty Spurs could have, if they weren't so dusty, finish above you guys. But look, this is not all about Arsenal. And we've got Football Bant, who's going to come in and shake his bum for his club before we wrap up. But on a level, though, Josh, Villa done well. This has been a perfect weekend for Villa. You stepped up when 
People, when you underestimate, okay. that's why you can't underestimate teams in the Prem. When you underestimate, you get chewed in the batty. And everybody got chewed in the batty. Arsenal mm. got really chewed in the batty today. But I have to say, I was thoroughly impressed. This is not a love loss between us. I still think Tottenham will finish above you. But for Villa, are you guys going to kick on? Because the one thing that I, I've noticed about you guys, Josh, is that you you win today and then you bloody lose to Luton next week, that type of thing. And then it's like, what's the point? What was the point with all of this? Have you got enough minerals to get it over the line? Speak now. Speak for the Villa fans that are in the chat. What are you to confirm that your team will get Champions League football next year? Will Villa get Champions League football? Do you know you know we will. You don't have to pretend to tell people that you still think Spurs are. Because you've told me if we win today, which we did, that we deserve top four. You know that fact. You know that fact. I said you, you know deserve. That. Do you yeah, think yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do it? Yeah. Uh, do I think we can do it? This has been my state of play for the last three weeks. I don't know if you remember quoting I quoted this, Deji. So this you and Cass. By the end of the final whistle in the Arsenal game, I said if Aston Villa sat in fourth spot, we'll go on to get fourth. Can you remember me saying that about three weeks ago? Yeah. I yeah. said if asked at the final whistle, if we're still in fourth place, we'll go on to get fourth. You're right to question our consistency. We've got a very tricky tie on Thursday, away at Lille, 5.45 kickoff, 2-1. Lille haven't lost at home in 34 games. That's a massive Europa Conference League tie. But do I have absolute faith in my manager to go and tactically put on a masterclass in Lille and break their voodoo and get us to a semi-final? Absolutely. No other guy I'd want in the trenches and the dugout than that manager right now, Unai Emre, who knows European competitions like that. But then, we go to Bo- but then we've got Bournemouth. And, and I don't like that tie. Just how I saw Man United struggle against them. Just how I've seen other teams not sure what to do against Bournemouth. But I don't fear Chelsea. I don't fear Brighton. And we have a Liverpool side. Who knows who look like they're going off a cliff. I actually... I, I, I'm, laughing, I'm looking now, Dej, and I'm going top four's eyes. I've sat quietly for a lot of the season because I've been told, you're not at this table. This is your short minute of fame. This is this. this I call, is I call, I call you guys like, cute. I said it's cute yeah, what you've done so exactly. far this season. Yeah. <laughs> and I've and I've just sat back and thought, do you know what? All right, we might be the new boys. I'm going to let our football do the talking. But I also knew that there's people like Spurs, United, the Arsenal's who exist, who will fall off a cliff themselves and self implode. And Villa, I didn't need to talk talk our game. I just need to let the other clubs do the talking in a negative way. So. It's brilliant. I've seen a performance today that's given us rejuvenation. We haven't had a performance like that in about two months. Villa have stayed in the top four, not playing well. We've been we've been ropey at times, but we've hung on around the fourth, fifth spot. Today was a rejuvenation. Today was I've had loads of friends text me going, "That's the Villa I know. That's the Villa that I've been waiting for for a while." Liverpool fans texting me going, "Wow." We'll kick on now. That's that. That's that's fundamental. I believe we'll kick on and, and build on that. So yeah. Big up to you. I mean, look, I I think both our clubs deserve Champions League football. I no, don't I want Spiff to be an option, but I do think both Villa and Spurs deserve to be in the Champions League for next season. Um, but having fifth, I I do think when you're given fifth spot a Champions League place, we are diluting the competition, and I don't really like that. Well, big up to you. Look, I did say if you beat Arsenal away from home, you deserve to you deserve to get top four. Wherever you get top four is another story. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna t- turn my back on it. You deserve it. For me, the only way for Tottenham to 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 kind of usurp uh, Aston Villa in that fourth spot is for us to do the unthinkable. It's for us to beat the three Musketeers. If Tottenham slap up Arsenal, City, and Liverpool then we deserve to be in the Champions League next season. We deserve to be in that full spot. Well, I want to bring in football bands before we wrap up and then on him there before we finish off for our final predictions for the rest of the season. Football bands, I've seen you there bashing away at the keyboard. I am surprised to see you, my bro. Right now, you, Tony, and all the other cronies, you lot should be in hiding. You know, like that. We should be trying to look for you. 
But what have you got to say about your dusty club? Because today you were dusty. You got slapped up by Aston Villa. Explain. Firstly, don't put me in no party of Tony or any or any of them other man. I speak for myself. Yeah. Ooh. So let's let's just oh. let's just make that thing straight. Um. So anyway, let's be honest with you. Yeah. Emery's got Arteta's number, yeah? And I'm just going to talk about the game because I played the game, so I understand the game, yeah? Villa today, they look comfortable on and off the ball, yeah? Every time we have possession, you know, Villa look comfy, yeah? Villa look comfy when they had the ball. We had no answers. Um, we had a, some good chances, some clear-cut chances, but we had some also half chances as well like the Trossard chance where he shot it right at Martinelli the chance where Jesus headed it near post Saka had a chance near post I think we had another couple of chances as well double save for Martinez yeah as well so there's there was every chance going into that first half um you know nil nil that Villa will come out second half you know believing in themselves, believing they can get a result. And I have to speak on a couple of players um, in, in the Arsenal team because Arteta got it wrong for a start with his with certain players in the starting lineup. I think we should have went with Partey today and um, I don't think we should have started Sinchenko. If oh, you look at... Starting though. I mean, that's just dumb. This is just stripping this from Ar Arteta. Stripping. Yeah? stripping this. But um, if you look at Villa's first goal, yeah. Look where Zinchenko is. He's playing left back, but he's in the right. He's on the right. He's in the right. He's on. He's like on the right wing. What's he doing? So, all of these mistakes, yeah, um, contributed to our loss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the season's done as far as I'm concerned. City haven't even had to do anything, yeah. For us to just give up the title, us and Liverpool to give up the title. Very disappointing because it seems like it's another bottle job mm -hmm. in a calendar year. Um, people want to say about our team. Yeah, around well. about the same time. People want to say that our has improved us. Yes, he's improved us, but I don't think he can take us to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I said clearly from day one of the start of the season, and I don't I don't really care what anyone says. I'm real like Northside as well. So if he can't bring us a title this season, then he has to go. He has to go. You could talk so to me about alternatives and who to bring in. Huh? If you finish second, that wouldn't be good enough. That's not acceptable. Not for me. That's not acceptable. Yeah. My manager spent seven and a half, seven hundred and fifty million this season. Yeah, on players to win a league. We've got Zinchenko. We've got Jesus. Yeah, they're supposed to improve the side. They've made the side worse as far as I'm concerned. Zinchenko, I still remember that rubbish that you did last season when um, yeah, no. Trent had nutched you. Yeah, when Trent nutched you, you're there crying. Do you understand, yeah? <laughs> this season, you're doing something again. Jesus, man's trying to... Did you see that dive for that penalty that he done today? Oh, yeah. He tried to fool the ref to think that he can get a penalty, yeah? He, he, he learned again. that from Saka in the week. This is what I'm saying, yeah. Some of these players are not good enough for our team. Yeah? I'm not going to go too much in on Saka, yeah, because, boy, if I do, Onome, I know me and Onome are going to start clashing. But anyway, <laughs> Onome is my boy. Listen, I, I, my listen, boy, little man. listen you, know, you know when I know we lost? You know when I know we've lost this season, yeah? Listen to this. Listen to this. Get you. City's gonna get you. City don't catch you. That's me. City don't catch you. It don't happen again. It don't happen again. Oh, you know, I think I love you. This is when I know no, it was you know voice, no? <laughs> This is when I know it because Oname is my boy as well, yeah, as you know it, yeah. I ain't spoken to Oname. We've got our show and everything. Yeah. I ain't spoken to Oname for time. This is the first time I spoke to him. He hasn't had to do nothing. He hasn't had to get out of his bed. He hasn't had to leave his house. And he's already in the driving seat for the league. So, with, six yeah. games, with six games left. Listen, there's no... there's Listen, City are sharks, yeah? We know what they do at this time of the season, yeah? And I'll tell you where we lost it. We lost it when we went to City and we decided to be negative. 
yeah, yeah. And, and I just and said that. Draw. I just, I just said that. Yeah. yeah, we went to City. We Ridiculous. Know, we went to City, and this is where you have to take. You have to blame the manager, yeah? What kind of mentality is he going into this game? We were going into that game, yeah? What, on a 10-game streak or something like that? Yes! I think City was still playing. Still, City was still winning games. But I think we had the opportunity, you know, maybe to get a smash and grab or win or something like that. But then City, it's always City, isn't it? City always because that that, 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 that that comes from the managers, doesn't it? Because you, yeah. you, you can't tell me that the players go on the pitch and started playing defensively and, and your, your your wingers turn into right backs and you have six defenders, they're all clashing, they're mm. all like it was it was it was so bad. I was thinking yeah. this is not a top team. L- Liverpool will never come and play us like this. Oh, exactly. But you can see exactly. this season, sorry on the mayor and football bands and Josh. You can see that the pressure has definitely got to Arsenal because mm. I, I knew the pressure got to Arsenal when Saka was play acting at the end of the game. He clearly Which kicked one? Maguire and then he pretended to be Vex. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That was Oscar winning. Like he was really robbed. Well, you bloody tried to fake a foul. You tried to cheat the ref. And then we've seen Jesus do the same thing today. Because the, the pressure is getting to them. And when I was telling people last year that these men have, haven't really done their A-levels and you're going to put them now, they've got to sit their exam, they've just come from their GCSEs and now you want them to do A-levels, it's going to be long. And we're seeing it again. I'm not going to call it a bottle job, but Arsenal fl- flatter to deceive. And I think Arsenal fans who shake their bum violently for their club need to accept that when I was telling you that there's no difference between Arsenal and Spurs, now you see it. Now you see it. Because after I, all this, I think it is a bottle job, you know. To personally, I personally think it is a bottle job because, you know, all we had to do is win today and we go two points clear. All we had to do is focus on every game. And when you have a mindset of you have to win every game, that's what you should be going into every game with. I believe that we could have won, won every game. I believe we're slapping you up. I believe that we're slapping Chelsea up. That's the mentality I was going to with every game. Every game, this is, every, now, every game is a cup final kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. You see today every now. You see today now. Villa Villa turned up, and we didn't. And so now you can just think that Bayern's gonna we're gonna lose to Bayern. Then it's just gonna just be a downward spiral, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think, then it's just gonna be like, oh, we competed, we got top four again. It's rubbish. I, I think so. You know, sorry guys, I, I have to kind of wrap, but I kind of think yeah. it is a downward spiral because we saw Liverpool drop points last week and then we saw them and so- up by At- Atalanta and that is carried on. I, I think when, because of the pressure of this of the, of the tail end, the business end of the season, when you have a blip, when you have a wobble, the way that Liverpool's wobble, it it kind of follows you for a good three or four games. You get, I, you get worried you know, and scared as well. Yeah, I can see Arsenal City slipping up. That, City don't do that, though. Have you noticed? City no. don't do that. They don't, they and don't if they wobble. have a wobble, they're back the next game stronger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, because Pep, changes, Pep changes something. He changes things. Mm. He changes a couple of players. He changes the formation. Like, I, I can name you five formations that we use. Do you know what I mean? And that's just me watching the games. I know, you know, I know five different ways that we can play, depending on how you play. But it's just, yeah, for me, it's just like when you came to the Etihad and I saw how negative you were, I was actually embarrassed watching watching Arsenal. 70, what, 72% possession we had against wow. Arsenal. Jesus. Against That's against ridiculous. against top of the league Arsenal. For me, that is a small that is small mentality. Have you ever seen Liverpool? Have you ever seen I mean, Liverpool Brentford in bad no form? Position. They Even no in position. bad form. Have you ever seen Liverpool do that? Come and sit back. Liverpool come and attack us. They yeah, get yeah. position. We're scared. We're worried that oh, they're gonna score. Yeah. That's why the games are interesting. But Arsenal yeah. came and they sat and they, they, they never went forward. They never crossed the halfway line. I'm like, this is embarrassing. This is just yeah. awkward mentality. And I think it's that that mentality. But um, football bands, just quickly before we wrap up, because I think it's only right. This is a reaction to the Villa Arsenal game. Can I just get your thoughts on Villa quickly as well, just before we wrap up? What were your thoughts? Were you impressed by them? You and I, and what do you think Villa will do towards the end, just for Josh as well? You know what, yeah. People like to take the fun out of, um, take the mick out of Emery, yeah, but Emery is a top-class manager. Yeah, sometimes he doesn't get it right, but 
you know, I, I think I, I think they're gonna they're gonna make top four, and I think they're gonna do it comfortably. To be honest, um, calm yourself. You know, they got they got. Well, you ask me my opinion. I'll give you my opinion, yeah. isn't it? Uh, just I think just got, just, I think just smiling, guys. I know. I think they've got very good players. Uh, Bailey coming on today, he was just perfect when he came on. Uh, they didn't even have Douglas Louise, you know, one of their best midfielders out. Um, you know, Diaby was impressive. Um, Holly Watkins, one goal behind um, Haaland, um, you know, top, top striker this season. You saw his finish today, he was brilliant. You know, McGinn in midfield, you know, Pau Torres at the back, Martinez, world-class goalkeeper. So, They've got all the ingredients to kick on um, to, for the rest of the season. Um, yeah, they might lose a game here or there, but I still think they're in the driving seat for top four. Um, and yeah, they're they're a very good team, and not not many teams have beaten Arsenal at the Emirates. I think only one other team beat us this season. Yeah, um, was it who beat us at, at the Emirates? Was it Fulham? It wasn't Fulham. Fulham wasn't I think, who was it? Who was it? It's Fulham. It's Fulham. 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 Oh yeah, Fulham. Yeah, and, you, beat yeah. you beat them twice. No, yeah, Villa's beaten us twice. They beat, beat us at home anyway. Yeah, jeez. So yeah, yeah they, 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 beat, they beat us. They beat us in that in that streak as well. Yeah, yeah, you bastards. I remember so, that. Yeah, they've been cooking, man. They've been cooking this season, and man, it's 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 a straight fight between Villa and Spurs, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's who's gonna drop the most? Just like. You know, the top three is between the top four four and five now, isn't it? Who loses games here? Who wins games there? Because you guys are close on... You guys would have been close on um, goal difference, isn't it? It was one point. Yeah, goal I mean... Difference, it? But now it's two now, and they're three I, points. Yeah, I think it's like plus four now because of the Newcastle I, fan thing. But I, 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 I'll, 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 say this, I'll say this now. I'll say this now. We are three wins away from winning the league. We win our next three, three, three games yeah. we win the league. Because I don't think yeah. these two teams are going to win the next three games. Yeah, probably, yeah, and well, Arsenal definitely winning the next three games. That's what I'm saying. We're winning the next three games. We're winning the next three games. We win the league. I don't think these two teams are going to win the next three games. Mm. We're winning the next three games. Forget the last three games. The league will be wrapped up by then. I, I can tell you that now. Mm. Yeah, fair, fair. Jo um, thanks, football bands. Thank you, Onime. Josh, any last words? What a weekend is all I'm gonna say. What a, what a weekend. weekend. <laughs> what I join you in that one. Weekend. You know Russia's what? Got his cigar, man, ready. I want to thank. I want to thank um, Liverpool and Arsenal because I'm not going to lie to you. It was a disgraceful weekend after getting slapped up by Newcastle. The way that we got slapped up, it made it all the better when Arsenal and Liverpool joined us in the mud. What can you tell me now? <laughs> we are allowed to make mistakes. First season rebuild for you, man. You, man, are not allowed to be flopping at this stage under your management. It's a disgrace. People in the chat, people watching later on, make sure you smash a like. Thank you for joining us. Big up to Northside. He was here earlier. Please, if you get an opportunity, Football Bands, plug your channel real quick, my guy. Yeah, it's Football Bands channel. Um, yeah, make sure you give us a like and subscribe. I'm here, man. I'm here for it. Anything coming up? Yeah, I'm probably going to Friday shows. Our Friday shows. Yeah, you Friday keep show. Me. Friday link up. No, Friday link up next week. Friday with Onami. Uh, we've got our show and um, probably doing a couple of watch alongs during the uh, during the week too as well. So make sure you guys come and subscribe, man. Big, big up, up to big Josh up. as well. Big up. big up, Josh. What have you got coming up, bro? Most in you tomorrow. Yeah. Um, that, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Uh, that'll be a dual stream, won't it, on your channel and my channel. Yeah. So a, a roast roast along again. Um and then yeah, all eyes on the conference league. Um let's go win a European trophy in I am right on Thursday. Big up and Ryan G's in the building. Ryan G, you know you gotta do that job against the oh, man. Make sure we we'll slap them up. That's a way, isn't it? Is that a way? That's a way, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think you guys are is net, is net, is net, is net fit. And you know who's mm -hmm. like playing on Neto fit. Is Neto fit? Neto, is he fit? I'm not sure. I don't think he's fit oh, yet. Man, I don't think he'll be back for that game. If Neto is fit, it's if Neto is fit, it's a long day. It was a long day for us when Neto was fit. Neto's out for the season. Neto's out for the season, but Kunye can still do something, though. Kunye can still do something. Kunye, man. But everyone, thank you for joining in. Please make sure you smash the like. It's going to be a fantastic week. The, the one thing I will say, leaving this to Arsenal fans, remember 
the three musketeers. I told you about that. Could the three musketeers be a possibility? Could Spurs slap up the big three? And then finally, the one thing that I didn't want to see, could Arsenal bottle the champs and the Prem in one week? In one week. Oh, my gosh. I don't know about you, but I'm going to have my finger on the pulse and I've been looking forward to the game. Thank you for tuning in. Have a safe evening and good night. Peace. Say bye.